Welcome to the Acoustic Guitar Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Grizzle. For this bonus Acoustic Guitar Sessions mini-sode, I'm joined by Naima Bach, a singer-songwriter with roots in Brazilian and British folk music. One quick note before we start. Uh, during our conversation, you may hear my dog barking in the background. Please accept our apologies in advance. He promises to be a very good boy during our recording sessions in the future. Our episode begins with an impromptu performance of a new song by Naima Bach, titled Showers. you get started playing guitar? Um, so I had my father played guitar and so that it was always around in the house. Um, in Brazil I was lucky enough to grow up with a family who so my dad played guitar um, predominantly electric but at home he would play you know nylon strung and then my aunts and my auntie was a cello player is a cello player and my grandmother is a pianist, and so I was kind of grew up with a lot of a lot of that stuff, mostly classical. They they play classical music, um, and then so I had that that kind of sonic world around me. Mm -hmm. Is is the guitar the instrument you mostly use for songwriting? Yes, I used to. I used to. <clears throat> I used to use bass more. Um, that would have, but that was about five years ago or something. And like a lot of the songs that were on my first record, I initially wrote on bass, and then uh, that was because I was that's what I was playing in the first band that I was in. But then, the, yeah, no, the last five years it's been all guitar, and I've tried to just have it with, like, make sure that the song is good enough, just guitar and voice, and then mm -hmm. only like quite a lot later start thinking about other things to put on it. So your your voice is pretty distinctive i mean you can how did you develop that that distinct sound that you have i don't know really i think i think it is just i think it is mostly just um it being my voice <laughs> i found a recording um not that long ago of me singing a sandy denny song when i was 13 and it was really it was really funny to hear because i thought about in my head i thought oh i've come this far with my voice and like kind of trying to be able to able to project more or you know doing trills better or these like technical things that I sort of thought I was improving on which I have improved on but I listened to this recording of me when I was 13 and it is kind of the same just like a few like you know octaves higher yeah. <laughs> so I just thought well I mean yeah you you do sort of get what you're given in terms of your voice and I remember once like someone said to me um, which slightly contradicts what I said earlier because there is always improvement but I think that in terms of tone um, and maybe that's mostly what comes across when people like have unique voices is like the unique tone that they have 
Um, mm-hmm. And I guess delivery as well, like depending on how much someone, how far someone pushes their voice. And often I think the further that one pushes their voice, it can sometimes become more generic sounding. That's like a, not always the case, but I sometimes find that like the better a singer is, you know, like the more they kind of just sound like everyone else. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, not every case. But so I not that I resisted being a good singer. I just think that I had to like watch how far I wanted to push it. Um, but into and then the next thing would be doing. I think doing folk like doing choirs, um, singing folk a cappella songs. That's probably been the the biggest helper in terms of learning how to like be more open with my less shy with my voice can you tell us a little more about your process for songwriting yeah i think that i've i've had it's changed um a bit over the last six months actually because before prior to six months ago my i would normally write two to three songs per year which is just nothing (laughs) and i would be very it, it would take me a long time to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with the song and whether what the lyrics should be and it would just take me a long time to write it and finish it and I sort of thought of this as like a you know a bit of a slow cooking attitude towards songwriting which I was fine to function in because I didn't ever I mean I'm grateful to myself for not ever really putting um like pressure on myself to write songs because and if I had periods of time which I have had many where I don't feel like writing songs I don't beat myself up about it um my friend calls them the fertile void which is I quite like because you know other things grow up in that time and you sort of ingest more than you put out and I think that that can be important um but the last six months I've found that I'm at you I'm back at university again and doing something other than music has been the best thing for writing songs <laughs> it's the it's a, probably like a strange brain trick you know um that where you if you the thing that you have to do songwriting has become my procrastination and so then I'm just writing loads of songs which is fun oh no I was gonna say like it's 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 a lot of it is dependent on who I'm listening to and if if I've got an artist or a musician that I'm really invested in, in that period of time over, it normally lasts two to four months where I just listen to one person predominantly. And if I have that kind of feeling towards a musician, then I'll, t- I'll write more songs um, mm-hmm. influenced by what they do. I was listening to, I listened to like Phil Elverham, so Microphones, Mount Erie, but I hadn't, I hadn't known anything about him before um last year and then I found the microphones in 2020 album song and so I listened to his music for about four to five months and I still listen to it quite a lot and then also in the and then the last person has been about three months I've predominantly just listened to um like everything Will Oldham's done so Palace Brothers Palace Music Funny Prince Billy um and actually, those two are the. Bi- I think I'd say I could probably just leave it at those two for the last, for the last period of time. Also, Joanna Newsom and Joanna Sternberg. Okay, let's talk guitars. Uh, what guitars do you play, and what do you like about them? So I've had um, my first guitar that I got, which is the one that I played live up until a year ago, is the Yamaha FG. 800 or something I can't remember the exact model but it was um it was like 250 pounds which is probably about 300 dollars I'm guessing um and it's very cheap but it was very sturdy and it and it stayed you know it didn't warp and it stays in tune and it was a really good guitar but I I, I kind of moved away from it um I just thought while well, I'm like, uh, I thought I, if I'm going to do this as a job, I need to get like a real expensive guitar. <laughs> so I tried to buy, I kind of went through a few different guitars. Um, I mean, shall I actually reel off all of the guitars? Is that going to be boring? <laughs> this is a guitar nerd podcast, so we're into it. <laughs> so yeah, so I had that Yamaha and then I went and then I did because I 
definitely wasn't a guitar nerd. I just thought I want a guitar that looks cool. So I got a Hofner from like a 1964 Hofner and it was very thin, which is, um, yeah, very thin, like V E R I thin. And, uh, it was not a great guitar <laughs> and it really went out of tune all the time but everyone thought everyone was like wow that looks so cool and then i just thought well maybe i'll keep it as a kind of investment you know it's, it's like pretty old and it's been kept in good condition ish but um yeah and i have i've still got it i've tried to sell it no one wants it so i don't know what i'm gonna do <laughs> I'm sure somebody out there wants it. It's from 1964. Yeah. I feel like, sh yeah. I mean, my other option is just to hold on to it, you know, and then like in 40 years, it'll be worth loads more. And then I moved on to, and then I bought a, a Larive, um MG800, I think is, I'm, I'm closing my eyes because I'm picturing the sticker inside the guitar, but I can't say that I know exactly what the model is for that. Uh, but an OM, I think, the Larive was and it was that was a really beautiful guitar but it's too it's too precious to take on tour or to play gigs with it's just it's really nice and it's rosewood as well and so I just keep it at home in its case and play it like every now and then um and then I had oh and then I got but this is acoustic guitars actually I realized I was talking about Hofner Hofner was hollow body which is you know half of an acoustic guitar counts yeah. And then after the Larive, I tried to get, I tried to get a Mar. I've been kind of wanting to get a Martin for a really long time, but I haven't, they're really expensive, but so I haven't quite managed to get myself a Martin yet. That's kind of, that's something that I'm, I'm going to work towards. Um, but the main guitar that I play now is a nylon strung, which is this one. It's an Alhambra. And it's, it's new, I bought it new uh, for like 1200. I actually will be able to tell you the model of this one. Well, that's a complicated model, surely not. CSLR, I don't know, crossover Alhambra. Um, mm. But it's got like a good, the main, one of the main reasons I got this is mostly because, well, I mean, it's also solid wood, so it's not laminate. And it's the microphone, there's a microphone inside rather than, um, I can't remember what the other kind of, you know, like metallic pickup like a, is. Uh, piezo pickup or something. Yeah, it's not that. It's like a, it's a Fishman, but it's tiny microphone in it, which just means that, like, because try, I was using a JR Braggs pickup on acoustic guitars, and acoustic guitars are obviously difficult to play live with, and it's super venue dependent, like dependent on the PA, um, and they. I didn't really give it a second thought until a very honest and kind friend of mine three years ago said that the guitar sounds like shit. So I was like, right, I need to actually sort it out. And then I, since then I've been on a really annoying journey of trying to find the right mix of, you know, because I'd like to, I'd prefer to play with a microphone to the acoustic guitar, just an external microphone to the acoustic guitar. But in the gigs that I play usually, which are like support slots, it's very kind of, you know, you got like 20 minutes to do a sound check and and the engineers hate you because <laughs> they like the might if you use a microphone it feeds back and so I decided to get this guitar and um and the it's the, it's still not perfect and it doesn't sound great when you strum it, but it sounds beautiful when you finger pick it and so it's been it's been like the best thus far. But mm -hmm. my my you know acoustic guitar pickup journey is not over, um, and actually I think nylon strung in terms of if you're going to be playing like just on your own, then it feels I feel like the sound of it fills the room a little more. It's super warm and pretty loud as well. I mean on its own without amplification, it's it's a lot louder than a steel strung. Um, but yeah, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed my nylon strung life over the last six months has been good and it it, it yeah. changes the way i write songs as well i think how so how does it change your songwriting um it's just a bit it make it veers you away it veers one away from just doing the kind of like you know like the there like very like basic strumming patterns and it just asks to be finger picked and it kind of means that i have tried to learn new techniques with that not being like super successful but i'm on my i'm trying <laughs> A lot of the music 
some of my favorite musicians that play acoustic guitar I realized only recently play nylon strung so like I was listening to an Aldous Harding record she plays mostly nylon strung other than when she plays piano I know that um, Mount Erie a lot of Mount Erie songs are on nylon some Jessica Pratt tunes are on nylon but like yeah I've started noticing the difference I guess in tones a little bit more to hear more from Naima Bach, be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. If you're enjoying the Acoustic Guitar Podcast, please head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash acousticguitarplus. This is a listener-funded show, and your pledge of $1 or $5 or $9 a month helps us continue to produce new episodes. Plus, you'll get instant access to a whole bunch of great perks, like exclusive live stream workshops, song transcriptions, and guitar lessons. If you aren't able to make a contribution at this time, we understand. Another way you can support the show without spending any money is to leave a five-star rating along with a review on Apple Podcasts. This really does help with discoverability, and the more guitarists who tune in each month, the better. Thanks again for listening and for your support of the Acoustic Guitar Podcast.